Hello. Uh, today we have Professor Pawan Pudwal with us. So welcome to the Ayanandar campus, sir. Thank you. Uh, a little introduction about him. Uh, he is Professor of International HRM at Aston Business School. He has earned three master's degree and an esteemed PhD from Manchester Business School. Uh, and uh, he, has more, uh, he has published almost 13, 13 books okay. and close to 50 papers in uh, uh, reputed journals. So, uh, without any delay, we start a little discussion with him. Sir, it's been so long journey from uh, Rota to uh, UK and uh, many places in UK. So, how was your uh, journey to, uh, so far? The journey so far has been wonderful. And uh, the journey from uh, Rocket to uh, UK started uh, when I was fortunate enough to get a Commonwealth scholarship to do my PhD at Manchester Business School. So I did my PhD uh, in 1997 and it was awarded in 1998. And after that, uh, I worked for uh, seven years at uh, Cardiff Business School and for the last 10 years, I'm a tester. So the journey has been uh, very good so far. Okay, so uh, my next question is uh, why you chose academic career? This was, uh, I will say, a pleasant accident. Uh, I never planned for it. Uh, my first uh, kind of uh, choice was to join Army, but uh, that was not allowed uh, because I'm the last one in the family. Somehow the intention was to stay at home, so I was fortunate enough to get a job in my hometown. And uh, from there uh, it went on, and uh, the more I reflect upon, the more I realize that uh, certainly academics is uh, the one thing which I'm enjoying. And uh, the present accident was uh, a correct one, and I'm in the right field. Uh, that's how I put it. So far, you have published uh, many papers in many reputed journals. So, uh, what was your most challenging research? Now? Most uh, researches are challenging. Uh, uh, some of them, uh, they will have their own challenges, uh, and they can be in the form of uh, getting access. Uh, some of them uh, will have uh, challenges in the form of uh, publishing them, and uh, some of them uh, may be not getting the right kind of data. So I have a mixture of everything. Uh, so the end result, uh, which you are pointing out, a uh, large number of publications and books, uh, the journey on that route has never been smooth. And uh, I doubt if it will be smooth for anyone. So I have my all ups and downs uh, by the time uh, I have uh, completed a project. Uh, so. Uh, lots of challenges of different types, but uh, somehow the way is to continue pushing on them. And that's what I've done. Uh, and that's what many other scholars will do. And that's how you end up getting things published and completing successfully the particular project. Uh, any, uh, any social impact uh, research taken up and has been the and has been during data collection or any other time? Repeat the question all the time. Uh, any research you have taken up so far which has a social impact and uh, uh, it just touched you somehow during data collection process or uh, during any interaction with people? Yeah, uh, there are a number of them, but uh, one was quoting. Uh, I have done a number of projects on Indian call centers. Uh, and on, during one of the projects, uh, of course, getting access was not easy, but uh, we managed to get access and uh, we were speaking to uh, shop floor uh, employees, uh, first line uh, associates of Indian call centers. And uh, to my horror, uh, in one of the call centers, uh, we discovered that uh, the employees were not paid for three months. Uh, and the budget was, if they are paid, then they will leave. Uh, which is uh, completely uh, baffling against uh, the legislation, against uh, kind of the work people are putting and they are not rewarded. So it was very sad. At one stage we thought of uh, going to the media and reporting this, but somehow we signed the 
confidentiality uh, form with them that will not name any names and so on. So socially, uh, uh, many projects can be really challenging, but this was on the extreme side. So this was probably the case of the labelers. The, the labor laws are there, but uh, perhaps uh, this was an extreme case of exploitation which some of the employers uh, can manage and uh, somehow still get away. Uh, and, uh, it, it was unfortunate uh, the employers didn't have a strong voice on that. Uh, and they were just suffering. So, sir, uh, you, you moved to UK for your PhD. Uh, but after few years, you decided to uh, get associated with India again. So, what made you again start your research or collaboration in India? Uh, my association with India never stopped. Uh, my PhD was a comparative work between India and uh, the UK. And I continued that and I continued to build on that. So, till now, Almost uh, 90 plus percent of my empirical research is on India. Uh, other researches uh, which are empirical and uh, which are in other parts of the world, or the majority of them are collaborated with others. Uh, there are 10 books which uh, I won't put as uh, empirical work. So they are on other parts of the world. The majority of my uh, empirical work is on India, from day one until now. Uh, so, so uh, you have uh, researched in Indian environment and as well as UK environment. So, uh, one, one question which is must to ask to you is what is the difference you uh, feel in the research culture uh, between the two countries? There, there, there is a significant difference. Uh, of course, uh, the enthusiasm of the researchers is same at both the places. Uh, unfortunately, when it comes to getting access and uh, conducting research, going into the research organizations, that's where we have massive differences. In the UK, if someone will give you access, they will give you access on the basis of the merits uh, of your proposal and uh, they can make out uh, the organization will benefit and accordingly things go ahead. Whereas in India, the research culture is still significantly missing. And the uh, majority of the researchers, including me, uh, we we'll end up getting access because of our networks. And uh, once you are in, in the organization, uh, the participants uh, contributing to the research, they are unable to fully understand, despite of explaining them a number of times, the significance of research and uh, the way they should participate in the research. Uh, what happens in the end, uh, as per my long experience, uh, participants will end up giving you, in a way, rosy data, which uh, I mean uh, they will try to please you by telling you all the things are wonderful and so on. Uh, and that kind of data is not the realistic kind of data you are looking for. And uh, when you analyze that data, many times you will not find anything significant. Uh, this is uh, mainly based on surveys. Uh, of course, when you are conducting the interviews, that if you have the right skills, you can still manage to get the information you are looking for. But largely, the difference is in India still the research culture when it comes to uh, going to organizations, getting access, and getting quality data that is significantly missing. So, um, what, what will be your advice to other doctor students here in India? How should we make progress? The culture should develop. The only uh, kind of advice is hopefully you do your PhD only once and uh, you should uh, really put in your best uh, and uh, utilize the opportunity which has been offered to the doctor student by giving them admission to a prestigious institution like this and uh, try to conduct a leading kind of research which is not existing which will make a solid impact because uh, a number of things depend on the PhD you have done and what follows from there, including the number of publications you can have, including the kind of job you will have, and including the kind of uh, reputation you will develop in the world as a researcher. 
So it's a uh, very starting point in uh, a researcher's life. So one should put in their best and uh, ensure that their PhD is of high quality. And uh, many other wonderful things are expected to follow from that. So one should not make compromise on the planet. Thank you. So, um, a personal question. Um, you have been associated with many universities uh, as a visiting professor and uh, other associations. So, any plans to come back to India? Like 100% commitment to work in India? My belief is uh, no matter where you are, uh, it's a matter of doing work. So, uh, I'm still very much uh, an Indian by heart. And uh, I believe. Uh, if the right kind of work environment is available, then uh, one can deliver uh, what one intends to. And so far, uh, I'm not fully convinced if I come back, uh, I'll have that kind of work environment and uh, infrastructure uh, which is needed, uh, which uh, will allow me to work without too many distractions. Uh, because uh, uh, to do high level of research, one needs to stay very focused. Uh, and for me, uh, there can be distractions once I come back uh, to India. Uh, though they can be uh, managed uh, as and when you come here. But at the moment, I believe where I am, it's allowing me the freedom uh, to do the kind of work I want to do. And uh, I'm enjoying that. Uh, the bottom line is uh, to do uh, the kind of work I want to do related to India. And uh, that's happening. That's uh, for me is the key. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay. So uh, we look forward for uh, your more visits to our in our campus. Uh, let's see. Uh, when I come back, uh, certainly I'm coming back next Friday. That's a commitment I have to fulfill. Uh, otherwise, we'll see. I'm open uh, if uh, my visit can be meaningful. Uh, I'll try to make it uh, as and when it be possible. Okay. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you.